Okay, so we've been talking about in equations and graphs and so when we start introducing a second pronumeral into our in equations, we then get regions in the plane. I mean when it was an equation, it became an equation of a parabola or a cubic or so on. Um, so now when it's an in equation, we're talking about a region. So which points satisfy. So if we're going to drop a region, we want the boundary, which is basically the equation of the curve that they'll give us. Now, if it's just less than or greater than, we use a dotted line to indicate the boundaries not included. And if it's a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to, then we draw a solid line to indicate the boundary is included. Now, when it comes to the point of intersection, we use the same rule as we do on the number line. If the point of intersection is included, then it should be a circled in or coloured in dot. If it's not included, then it'd be a hollow dot. Now, we don't normally indicate that unless it's not clear. I mean, if two solid boundaries meet, then clearly the point's included. We don't worry about it. But it's more when we involve a dotted line, because if one of the boundaries is dotted, then the point of intersection is not included because it doesn't satisfy both of the in equations. So we should be circling that and leaving it hollow. Uh, and then basically it's, again, like our number line ones where we just have one pronoun, we just test regions to work out where are we talking about, which area do we shade in. So these are very simple ones, it just involves a straight line. Y is less than X plus 3. So it's going to be a dotted line and we draw in the line Y is X plus 3. When we mark in the boundary, we still label it as equal to. We don't write less than because what we're doing is labelling the boundary. The boundary is the line Y equals X plus 3. So which side of the line are we on? Well, we test a point and let's go for the easiest point, which is 0, 0, if we can. We can choose any point, of course, as long as it's not on our boundary. So if we throw in 0, 0, then 0 is less than 3. Well, yes, it is. So therefore, we should be on the, the right-hand side or underneath the line for that one. Of course, it doesn't have to be lines. This one's going to be a circle. The boundary is included this time. So we draw in the line, there we go, or a circle x squared plus y squared is 9. Again, it breaks our number plane into two sections. For this one in time, we're talking about inside the circle or outside the circle. Again, we can use 0, 0 to check. Uh, 0 greater than or equal to 9. Well, no, it's not. So we should be outside the circle. This is a very interesting one. Because y is less than the square root of 4 minus x squared. Well, the boundary is the semicircle and it is dotted. But we also have more to this boundary than just that semicircle. Because at the moment, it's not broken into two sections, if you like. Because below the semicircle, it can sort of spill out and go everywhere. Okay? We're still restricted by the domain of the function. Well, let's first of all test our point, and then I'll talk a bit more about that. Um, zero is less than two, so I know I'm inside my semicircle. Okay. A lot of people would just do that. Well, that, of course, is incorrect. There are other points that will satisfy, and we have to draw in a corridor, if you like, because all the x values from minus two to two can still be substituted in. Now, these ones underneath are going to give a negative number. So, of course, yeah, it's still less than. It will satisfy the inequation. If it was a greater than, then our corridor would, would go up. But notice the boundary is solid, not dotted. Right? The original semicircle was dotted, but if you grab a point on the boundary, it'll satisfy the inequation. Because the y value will be negative, and sure enough, the negative will be. Now, technically, what I should have done, and I notice I haven't done, that means I've got a dotted boundary meeting a solid boundary, 
So I should have indicated the point of intersection. Now, would it be included? I'm pretty sure it's not included. No, so okay. All right, we've got a combination of two with this one. Y is greater than or equal to x squared, which is, of course, our parabola. So let's draw that one in, and that's a solid line. Now, what I do is I'll test it, but I won't actually shade the whole thing in yet. Uh, I can't use naught naught this time. It's, it's on the parabola. So I just have to pick a point that I know is not on the parabola. Something on one of the axes is usually an easy one to test. So I've gone for naught one, which would be inside the parabola. Naught uh, is less than or equal to one. Yes, it is. So I know I'm inside, but I'll just mark some points inside. So I know, okay, I'm, I'm inside. So I've got to put some blue crosses there. Now I'll draw the line in. Uh, and again, I'll test a point. This time I can use zero, zero. Oh, yes, of course it's important we find our points of intersection, so solve them simultaneously. And so our points of intersection would be minus 1, 1 and 4, 16. Okay, let's sub a point in. As I say, I can use zero, zero this time. Uh, zero less than or equal to 4. Yes, it is. So I'll pick a different colour. Now I'll draw some red crosses. So the question simply becomes is, which of the regions do I have both red and blue crosses? Oh, well, that must be where I'll shade in. So it'll go inside there. That's the region I'm talking about. Okay. Bria. Let's have fun colouring in. <laughs> <laughs>